So uh, I'm Kamal Govindraj. I uh, have been working as the chief architect at uh, Grow. Uh, so I've spent the last uh, four years there, like uh, very challenging and existing, exciting four years. Um, and like uh, Grow, I think uh, most people would be aware of what we do, but for uh, those of you who are now not familiar, like Grow is a digital first uh, investment uh, platform. Uh, we are uh, the largest uh, broker in India by uh, number of users, but we still have some way to go in terms of turnover uh, and volumes and things like that. Um, and the USP of uh, Grow is to kind of make uh, investing very, very simple. Um, like when I started my investing in journey like 20 years ago, um, I do like go literally to a broker's office and fill out uh, a 10 page form and then wait for five days for it to uh, account to be created. And you know, even though I was able to kind of then transact online, but the whole process was very, very tedious. Uh, what uh, Grow has uh, done is uh, made all that very simple. And a lot of the uh, customers we have are people we have brought into investing, they are first time investors uh, who are now being able to kind of just download the app, uh, get onboarded, um, just having an Aadhaar card in 15, 20 minutes and within a day uh, get to be able to transact. And to provide that kind of simplicity, uh, it involves a lot of complexity uh, behind the scenes. Uh, so to be able to kind of show real-time uh, PNL for your portfolio, like as the prices change and you are able to kind of see the PNL of your portfolio change every second, uh, that involves uh, a lot of uh, challenges. Um, and uh, uh, fortunately, like some of the initial like architectural decisions that were made has enabled us to kind of keep up and stay ahead of that scale without making any large architectural uh, changes. A uh, few of the things that we've done well from the beginning is like, uh, it's uh, truly a microservices architecture. A lot of uh, product vertically aligned uh, services that kind of own the entire uh, infra. Like we don't have a few large databases we have like uh, uh, a lot of small uh, cluster of databases. Hmm? So that kind of simplifies uh, the uh, ability to uh, scale. And then we've kind of relied on tried and uh, tested uh, tech, like uh, people sometimes like to call us stack very boring. Uh, and that has also kind of helped us uh, like make the changes uh, as we uh, encountered scale. Uh, on the database side of things, some of the uh, things that we have uh, done along the way is to kind of uh, optimize the uh, database, like make sure uh, the database only contains the um, working set. Like a lot of our data is very transactional in nature. There is a definite life cycle after that, uh, the data becomes immutable. Uh, so we've done a lot of work to kind of archive that and not keep it in our main transactional store. Uh, that makes it uh, much easier to kind of uh, scale. Like if you don't have to keep track of a large amount of transactions, if I'm always have to just keep uh, a week of uh, worth of transaction in my database, uh, that put le less uh, uh, pressure on the database. Um, and then we've also done... Um, typical things like uh, splitting our uh, read and write uh, workflows. Uh, we leverage uh, CDN uh, caching, app side caching uh, very, uh, very, very uh, extensively. So uh, we leverage the compute that is on the app, uh, which kind of enables us to decouple some of the backend service scale from the actual user scale. Like, like we have this uh, 915 when the market opens and then you suddenly see, see the uh, scale. So we've done a lot of work to kind of flatten that and reduce that scale. And uh, this has helped us uh, like deal with uh, the scale uh, so far. Uh, but looking uh, forward, uh, so 
like five years down the line, um, the conservative estimates are like we'll um, like see five or ten x the the users, the transaction volumes, and mm, all that. And uh, the general uh, accepted uh, principle is like whatever architecture you start with, however good it is, it is only good enough till you kind of reach about like five or ten x. So beyond that, you need to kind of go and relook and uh, make some very uh, fundamental changes to uh, your architecture. Uh, that is uh, the point we are at, and we are kind of improving things like improving resiliency. Like we are mostly now um, single region, single um, cloud. Uh, so we have an ability to kind of bring it up on a, uh, another region, uh, but uh, we, we still uh, have some way to go to meet the uh, the RPO, RTO requirements uh, that we have. Um, so for all these things, like what we um, have been working on is like, how do I come up with, uh, like make these architectural changes and make it centrally without uh, having to kind of go and change each and every application. Like, can I, can I kind of build some centralized components uh, uh, that can do a lot of these, provide me a lot of these capabilities, and leverage the existing applications to uh, to a large extent. So that is uh, what we have been thinking of, and uh, uh, this is kind of the architecture uh, we want to uh, go towards, uh, where uh, whatever uh, right now, uh, the set of services that uh, and the uh, dependent infrastructure components we have that is serving a set of customers, we want to just uh, be able to replicate, like make another copy of it, another copy of it, and at the top level, chart the users across. So everything that goes into uh, inside that, those applications are already built to kind of handle our current scale. So if I'm able to kind of uh, build the uh, routing layer to kind of be able to uh, distribute these users across these multiple um, shards or cells. And then uh, the database layer, I uh, build the ability where the data of these users can be easily moved from one shard to another when I have to kind of uh, like introduce another shard or redistribute some of the load. So if, if we build those two layers, like a lot of the things in the middle can continue uh, as it is. So that is, that is what we um, started working on. And uh, this is where like the need for um, a different kind of data store uh, came up. Like um, we've been uh, very successfully uh, using MySQL, manage MySQL till this point. Uh, but to kind of satisfy some of the new architectural requirements like uh, we needed uh, horizontal scalability, uh, we needed uh, uh, the ability to kind of do reads and writes from uh, multi-region, uh, we needed uh, the, uh, yeah, and bunch of other things that we already had, like we don't, didn't want to lose asset, uh, asset com uh, compliance, uh, and in addition to that, like we wanted a easy migration path so whatever applications that were working on MySQL uh, with existing data, uh, how do we kind of uh, seamlessly migrate without making a lot of application changes? So this is the, the requirements we started with, and then we identified a bunch of uh, uh, options, uh, uh, did a, a, a quick survey through all these things, and then... Uh, try to figure out if uh, these would match the uh, data store requirements we have. Uh, we kind of uh, uh, zeroed in on CockroachDB as one of the options that we would uh, extensively evaluate. Uh, and uh, if the evaluation, if we found some problems, we would go back and look at uh, the other options. And the evaluation, uh, like some of these uh, were the reasons why we kind of decided to go ahead with uh, CockroachDB. Uh, so it's uh, the Postgres compatible uh, SQL layer. Uh, most of our applications uh, are built using Spring Boot and JPA, which are uh, the application code is uh, database agnostic. So we can uh, 
uh, make very minor changes to uh, the application layer and then uh, get it talked to another database. Uh, and then uh, tools like, like we needed a very seamless migration. Uh, so whatever application that is running with data in MySQL, I uh, needed a way to kind of migrate uh, that not one shot, uh, migrate and then have a continuous replication going on. Um, and we also, anything that we build, uh, we always uh, need a quick fallback. So if I migrate an application from MySQL to CockroachDB and I have I encounter a problem, I need to be able to move back to MySQL till I'm able to uh, fix that. So we needed that ability to do bi-directional uh, replication. These were some of the tools that were uh, uh, available with CockroachDB and the, uh, the horizontal uh, scalability uh, support for multi-region uh, and some of these shards we actually wanted to kind of deploy across uh, regions and we wanted to control which users data resides in which uh, shard. So we needed the ability to kind of uh, enforce those kind of data uh, locality uh, and like price, of course, uh, uh, that is one of the uh, criteria. Like uh, we were willing to kind of pay a premium, but it has to be uh, within certain uh, range of whatever we were already uh, spending on uh, uh, MySQL. Uh, and we also, uh, like in future, uh, we might want to kind of uh, move out of cloud, like for regulatory reasons or for other regions. Uh, so we uh, also wanted a self-hosted option uh, available. Uh, so these these were the reasons why we kind of uh, picked uh, CockroachDB as one of the promising options. And uh, then we did a, a very thorough uh, evaluation. Uh, so for this evaluation, what we uh, did was we picked up a couple of our uh, production services that were kind of representative of all the applications that we run. Uh, so one of them was a very high uh, read throughput service where the uh, relaxed uh, consistency um, uh, guarantees and the other was a very um, high write and a very strong transactional uh, guarantee uh, kind of uh, uh, system. Uh, so then we tested all the migration tools, like we set up these applications uh, with a replica of the production data, uh, then used uh, malt and replicated to kind of simulate the actual uh, migration process. Uh, and on top of that, like we uh, kind of uh, ran load test with our uh, production traffic. Like we record production traffic, we had the capability to record production traffic and replay it, and uh, replay it at a uh, uh, with an amplification. So I can simulate like uh, 3x, 5x kind of uh, uh, load. And then we also uh, tried out some of these um, uh, introducing faults, like bringing down nodes, upgrading uh, versions. Uh, so we did all that uh, to kind of gain confidence that uh, when I um, tried tried out uh, in production, like there are a few surprises, uh, and uh, like we kind of were uh, uh, satisfied with the the evaluation we did. Um, so the database proved to be very very solid. Like uh, so so whatever the uh, graphs that Spencer was. Uh, showing up, like we didn't do such a thorough test, but we did kind of cover some of those uh, scenarios. And uh, we uh, noticed similar things like the P95, uh, the throughput uh, kind of remained uh, in the acceptable ranges. Uh, um, so the, the database itself was uh, really solid, uh, but we did face some of the challenges with uh, the migration tools and uh, uh, PCR and CDC, these were all like uh, things that were being very rapidly uh, developed and we were probably one of the early um, adopters uh, and we did get very, very good support from the uh, support team here, the engineering teams. So we were able to kind of uh, work with them, uh, raise the issues, uh, get uh, fixes very, very quickly and be able to kind of uh, wrap up our uh, evaluation process. 
uh, and after that, like we have uh, started the process of migration. Like we have uh, uh, about I think five or six of our services now. We have migrated from uh, MySQL to CockroachDB, and they are kind of running in production. Uh, so, so based on uh, our experience so far, like. Uh, if I'm asked for a recommendation, so um, like everything, there is a context. So basically, so anybody who is kind of starting now, early stage, learning curve and all that is not so steep. So instead of um, uh, choosing it in the traditional um, database, you can consider um, uh, like something like CockroachDB or a distributed uh, database. So that will kind of future-proof you without... Um, adding that extra baggage of uh, complexity that you have to carry on. Um, yeah, cost is sometimes, uh, again, a uh, consideration like, like most of uh, early stage startups and all get the credits from the cloud providers. And um, now if you want to use anything that is not part of that, mm, uh, that would uh, be uh, uh, a consideration. Uh, but if you don't have that constraint, uh, yeah, it would be uh, CockroachDB would be a, a good option. As any company that is in a, a rapid growth phase and uh, trying to build in a lot more uh, resiliency, multi-region capability, uh, multi-cloud, uh, all those things again, like uh, migrating uh, uh, like from like a traditional database to uh, a distributed database like CockroachDB is a good option. Um, so if, 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 if your application is kind of like the growth is very gradual, uh, it's kind of stable, but you are facing scaling challenges and all that, uh, like moving to a horizontally scalable database is a quick fix, um, but you'll gain more by actually relooking at your application and then trying to optimize, set up proper archival, all those things. And uh, after that, like you can consider uh moving moving to a distributed database uh so that that would uh that is kind of like what uh our recommendation would be based on the uh journey that we have uh, went through in evaluating and uh, using uh, cockroach tv uh, and i think uh i I'll, I'll be around so if uh, people have questions and want to uh know more about our experience how we're using it and all that i'll happy to uh, interact and share that. Uh, yeah, that's it. And I've finished ahead of time.